Hello folks, welcome to the Age of Asparagus and episode 3.10 of our series. Over the next two videos, we'll implement a simple drop and pickup system. By the end of this video, we'll have a mechanic for dropping weapons and other items, and the player will be able to pick them up. In the next video, we'll incorporate all this into our wave mechanic. Let's start by creating a new node that will manage the drops in our game. We can just make this, uh, we'll make it a spatial node, and I'm going to call it dropper. I'm just going to move it up a bit by our spawner, above our spawner. Let's give this dropper node a new script here, and let's save it in a new directory called drops. Not sure how much we'll have to put in here, but for now we can just put the dropper script. And we'll export a scene to start here. So we'll export a pack scene. That's going to be our drop item. Now we're going to use this to get ourselves set up and then later on we'll be getting that drop item from our waves. So we're going to start, we'll just create a simple method called drop. We'll instantiate the drop item. And Let's, let's drop a, let's drag a drop item in there for us. So we'll pick a weapon here, uh, one of our guns, and let's just drop a Uzi for now. Okay, back to our dropper script. So we're gonna instantiate the Uzi. That means we're gonna need access to the nav map. So we'll go var nav map, and we'll just give it a type hint here, navigation map. And we'll get it from our parent, which will be the, the game node here. And it has a nav map. We'll want to use the variable here because it'll hold the current nav map at the time we're dropping. So now we'll create a location variable. And from the nav map, we'll use that get, what do we call it? Get random empty coord. Mm, we don't want a coordinate, we want a, we want it, we want a vector three. Okay. And now we will move the actual dropper node itself. So the dropper node is a spatial. So we're just going to move ourselves. So we'll get our global transform origin. And we'll set that equal to a vector 3 that contains the location.x. Uh, however, we don't want to change the location.y because we don't want the drop to be at 0, which is going to be like overlapping with the ground. We're, we're going to want to move our dropper up a little bit in the scene. So let's just get our current y position, which I'm fairly certain there's an easier way to do it than this. But it'll work. So I'll get our current y. And then we'll get the z coordinate of that empty cell. Okay, and once we have that, we'll just add the drop item as a child of ourself, which is this dropper node. So in the game, we have our dropper here, um, which is just going to be on the origin. And if I hit one here on my number pad, and zzz, whoa, this thing is everything old. We probably want it floating uh, about the middle of the player here. So I'm actually just going to go into the transform and change the Y translation to 1.5. Yeah, that should work. So now the dropper will appear here, but it'll be moved over to wherever in our scene it gets dropped. Okay, so uh, why don't we try this? Let's just go in our game and we're going to have to call that drop method. After everything else is ready, let's go get that dropper node and we'll just call our drop method. There we go just to see if this is working. There it is, you see it? <laughs> it even, there's our Uzi over there in the corner and it even loaded itself. All right, so it's appearing, that's good. Uh, that's all that's gonna happen, we never actually drop again. We're not gonna use this, that was just to test it out. Let's go back into our dropper. One thing I'm gonna try and set up here at least a little bit in our dropper architecture is the ability to have kind of any kind of scene as a drop item. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gun, although we might, as far as this game goes, we might only ever actually get around to dropping 
guns, but maybe you could have like a health pack or uh, ammo if you wanted to implement actually collectible ammo instead of just reloading infinite ammo. And so with that comes, we're going to need some kind of multiple inheritance where the items that can be dropped actually know that themselves. And how we're going to do that is we're going to implement a drop method on any node that can be dropped, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'll show you how we're going to do this. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to instantiate the drop item and then we're just going to check and make sure that the drop item has a method. So we'll go has method and we're just going to look for the drop method. And if it exists, then we're going to drop it. And if it doesn't exist, then we can give some feedback probably like uh, invalid drop item. There we go, that's good enough. Probably, oh, forgot my colon here. Okay, so now we should actually get this error uh, if we run our game. Oh, except, um, control Z, can I get that drop item? Because our gun doesn't implement that, so it shouldn't actually work. And there we go, invalid drop item, it doesn't work. So, let's implement that method on the gun script. So if we go to the gun.gd, which is the base gun script that is used by all our guns, we're going to implement that method and I'll just go right down to the bottom we'll do it before our signal receiver and we'll create a function called drop and at this point let's just print gun dropped so we're going to try this first and then after that happens we'll actually maybe add some more stuff for example uh, maybe I don't want it to reload <laughs> when the gun drops or maybe I want it to spin a little or maybe I want it to actually be centered on the cell instead of way off which I don't know if you noticed but it was a little bit so now when we run this we shouldn't get the error the gun should appear and of course it didn't print because we don't actually call the dropped items own drop method which is what obviously what we should be doing so we're gonna do all this stuff we're gonna instantiate the item and before we add the item as a child to make it show up on the screen let's call the items drop method itself so drop item dot drop there we go so if there's any things we need to do we can do it before it appears in our scene and now we should see it called and the gun dropped text appear there okay so we're gonna be coming back to the guns drop method here to do a little cleanup but for now let's focus on implementing this whole dropper mechanic so we're gonna need to be able to pick up that drop and to do that I'm gonna add a new area a 3d area also known as a volume in the rest of the world and we'll add a collision shape which will make a cylinder and by default it's looking good it's just the size of the character which is fine I think except instead of calling this area um, I'm gonna F2 that and call this pickup area specifically okay and then we're gonna wanna detect collisions with this area so in the node here let's choose body entered because our player is a physics body here and then we'll connect that with our dropper node and our dropper script on pickup area body entered that's good and let's just start by saying picked up a thingy okay um, and that's gonna happen regardless of what kind of body enters including an enemy probably but let's just see if we can get that to print out when we go get it there we go picked up a thingy except it's still there <laughs> okay well actually the easiest thing we can do here is Q free that item when we pick it up. Um, currently the drop item scope is only within the drop method so let's take the scope out here our drop item and then that way we can refer to it here uh, to queue free it. Drop item dot queue free Q, Q, Q. Uh, it's not auto-completing because it doesn't know what it is. Now, 
We don't know what it is either. It could be anything, but at least it's going to be some kind of node, which should help us spell Q properly. There we go. And uh, I hope you're not sick of me testing absolutely everything, but anytime I get a testable piece of code, I like to do it. There it goes. Disappeared. Uh, that also helps you, too, to know you've been following along and haven't kind of... It's a little easier to catch bugs that way, I find. Okay, I do know that even if an enemy connects with this area, this has a collision with this area, this collision shape, uh, it's going to trigger this signal. So let's go modify our layers so that this area, so that this area here will only collide with the player. So let's go to our project, project settings, and down here, layer names. Okay, 3D physics, good. We'll add a new layer here called drops. We close that. And then uh, our dropper, no, our pickup area, we're gonna wanna choose the drops here. Uh, you may need to close this node or save it or something for the drops to appear, but it seems to have appeared perfectly for me. So the dropper, um, the pickup area here is going to be on the drops layer and it's going to be masked. It's only going to interact with the player layer. Oopsie. So now only the player should be able to collide with it. Okay, let's just make sure we did that right. Uh, and at least the player can still collide. Yeah, they picked up a thingy. It disappeared. Good, that signal was received. Okay, so when we actually interact with that item now, next thing we need to do is get it into our player's hands. So in our dropper script, let's create a new signal. We're gonna send a signal up to the game. Uh, we might even send it directly to the player that an item has been picked up. So above our ready method, let's create a new signal called item picked up. And when the player collides with the item, we'll emit that signal. There it is, okay, item picked up. And we're also gonna pass the item itself and we're gonna pass it as a packed scene. So here we go, the drop item as a scene, because we'll wanna reinstantiate it again for the player as the player's weapon, if that's what it is. Okay, so if we click on the dropper here and then go to node, we're gonna have our new signal item picked up. Let's connect that to the player script, and we'll hit connect there. And so now at the bottom of our player, we have on dropper item picked up. We're gonna add the item scene and this is a packed scene. So let's instantiate the item. And then after we've instantiated it, we can do various things with it. So if it's a health pickup or ammo pickup or a weapon pickup, here's where you can do some logic to see what kind it is. So at first, we're just gonna check if the item is a gun. And if it is, then we're gonna do some stuff. We will equip the gun. If it was something else, you might have some different logic here. So let's start as usual, just to make sure this is all happening, that the player found a gun. Boom, player found a gun, awesome. So the code, the logic is all seems to be working here. So now, here I'm just gonna put a little comment here. handle different kind of pickups here. You could almost have like a switch type statement almost. Okay, uh, we won't need that now. Instead, we're actually gonna equip the gun. So we made a long time ago, we made the player have a gun controller which can handle exactly that. So let's go get the player's gun controller. Oops. Player dot, player is not defined in the current scope um, because I am the player. Gun controller dot e yeah equip weapon we have an equip method equip weapon method and i don't actually remember if the equip weapon wants the item itself or a scene to instantiate so why don't we go take a look here gun controller equip weapon weapon to equip uh weapon to equip we're instantiating the weapon here. So this is a this is a packed scene. So we should probably, let's give it that type hint there. So back to our player script now, and we'll pass it the item scene itself. Now, <laughs> we're instantiating it an extra time here to check if it's a gun. 
I'm hoping that won't be too much of a problem, too much overhead. And uh, I, th assuming we did the equip weapon method, right? That should work okay. It did not work. Hmm. So it seems like uh, our signal is actually get, continues to get triggered, right? Like after we pick up the item. Well, that worked. Oh, but then when I enter the pickup area again, it's still, even though the weapon's not there, it's actually still detecting it and it's trying to queue free a drop item that doesn't exist. So we're going to want to introduce, uh, we're going to want to activate and deactivate the pickup area when a drop happens. So we'll do that by disabling the collision shape. So in the ready method, so when the game starts or whatever, let's just go, uh, we'll go pickup area collision shape. And then we'll just set disabled equal to true. And I'm going to copy this here. And then when we drop an item, uh, if it's a valid drop here, right before we drop it, we can set disabled to false. So now the pickup area, after it's been moved to its location, that collision shape will be enabled again. And then here, after the player hits the item, we'll disable that collision shape again and then we'll delete the item so because the collision shape is disabled we won't get this error because we won't uh, collide with that collision shape anymore until another drop happens until that method is called again so let's just make sure that's true we get the item oh and we it actually equipped it for us wonderful I should just go back and check that I do not crash the game by entering that area again okay so now how do we incorporate this into our game without having this drop method here in our game. 